Hey everyone, my name is Hallie and welcome to The Royalty. As you know, a few days ago I was taken on by Budget Arcade as an indie reviewer. We have decided that I'm going to make video reviews of my written pieces. This is for accessibility reasons. I'm super excited about it, I hope you are too. And today we are going to be reviewing Gravatar Recharge. Let's get into this. Gravatar Recharged is the latest resurgence of Atari. Adam Vision Studios developed it in conjunction with Lithuanian code shop Sneakybox, who are also responsible for many other Atari renovations, such as Breakout Recharge and probably the most well known, Asteroids Recharged. The game itself is simply designed but very pretty. The lights and the colour scheme add a very good layer of calm to what is at times a very frustrating game. The developers clearly know how to put together a good pastel pairing, and I am certainly a fan of what they did. They make it easy to understand what you must avoid, leading to my advice. If it's black, stand back. <laughs> Gravitar Recharged also offers a choice between keyboard and mouse and controller, having both fully supported. Personally, I found the controller an easier option, but my skill level of the game tells you that doesn't mean that it is correct. As someone who knows many gamers who struggle with keyboard and mouse due to hand injuries, this is a welcome addition and it does add a layer of inclusivity to the game. The menu is clean, showing the options of arcade and missions, but as I only delved into arcade mode, that is what I will be talking about today. I did not try the multiplayer of arcade, but I think it's important to know that this is a great feature of the game as it triggers the nostalgia of playing these games with my friends and siblings a long time ago in my childhood. When entering arcade mode, you are thrown straight into the game with a simple instruction. Land on a planet. This, however, is much easier said than done. As I began the game, I realised the difficulty of Gravatar Recharge controls, which are well modelled after its predecessor. You are not only fighting your own reaction times, but also the gravity that pulls you down throughout. Standing still in this game is nearly impossible, which keeps the movement throughout. You enter a planet by hovering nearby for a small period of time. Each planet has a different level with different objectives. Examples include activate the beacons, steal the intelligence, and my personal hell, reactor. <laughs> These levels all have their own reasons for difficulty, whether it be limited space to manoeuvre, enemies shooting back at you are just the gravity on each planet. You shoot in burst 3, with a small charger between each set of shots. This makes aiming important, because if you're struggling to stay upright while in a fight with another ship, that shot could be the difference between life and death in this game, and the sad animation of the ship poofing out of existence breaks my heart to this day. Oh, I was doing so well, bring me back! I was so proud of that. So, I was doing well for you. There are also power-ups you can collect during the game to have different effects on your ship, from health regen to missiles and more. The this can make things a little easier for those of me who struggle with certain missions. I'm going to take a moment to talk about the reactor mission. Out of all of the missions, this was the one I found the most difficult. And for a while, something I considered impossible. I actually put out a bounty for this and was proven wrong by a player called Handsome Panda. The mission was tight, not just in movement space, but with the enemies flooding it. The beams waiting to kill you with the help of gravity, and also the escape timer. This was, in my opinion, the hardest part of this game. Not to say that the rest was easy, however. On top of everything, Gravatar Recharge is priced at a very reasonable $9.99, if we're talking dollars, $7.39 in the UK currency. <laughs> this makes it not only a perfect impulse buy, but also a great game to give to your friends in order to force them to play with you. I didn't do that, what do you mean? <laughs> I had, however, hoped to see this on speedrun.com. This seemed like the kind of game that would be incredible to speedrun due to its difficulty, simplistic movement styles, and from what I saw, lack of cutscenes. 
I really want the speedrunning community to pick this up, and whilst I could not run it myself, I would certainly love watching it. Finally, if you are indeed a psychopath, there is also a way to make this game even harder. With the addition of bonuses including single life, no power-ups and no shield, this adds a huge difficulty boost for those of you who hate yourself, as well as a lot of replayability. If I had to assign a number to this game, which as you know is 9 10 to the review process, I would give it a 7 out of 10. Overall, it was a very good game with good replayability, albeit frustrating at times. I like the style, game options and ideas, but I may not have the skill level it takes to really get into this game. Although it is a game that I will likely take out every few months to rage at. So watch this face to see me beat Reactor one day. Oh hell no, I'm not making this harder. I, I don't even know how to play yet. Thank you so much for watching my first review. And remember, if you enjoyed this, please leave a like, please subscribe. If you've got something to say, leave a comment. And if you want to, you can turn on that notification bell. I'm proud of you for getting through today, and I'm even more proud of you for getting through tomorrow. And if you leave a dirt to you, good to shut us. Peace. See y'all on the next one. Bye!